Today we are going to dive into fascinating world of AI, specifically building an application with GPT and Microsoft's Autogen library, one of the most advanced AI tools of our time. And now we are going to make the AI work for us. We have a complex PDF where some balance sheet is hidden in it. And we are going to ask our AI to get that sheet and save everything in a CSV file. And that's the magic we are about to unfold. With Microsoft's Autogen and the power of GPT, we are not just coding. We are making our computers to understand and handle a task that would normally consume hours of manual work. If you are ready, let's open our Visual Studio code and start building. First, we are going to make a virtual environment in order to organize our libraries. Now we open our terminal and with this simple command, we are creating a virtual environment and then we are going to activate it, then install the necessary libraries. First, we are going to install PyAutogen. Then we are going to install LangChain in order to manage our external files like PDF and CSV files. And we are also going to need Docker because code execution of Autogen will actually make use of Docker. Now I copied the PDF file that I'm going to work on it. As you can see, our PDF file is in a free format, a very long statement. And in the end of it, we have some balance sheet and other kind of financial tables. We will see if our AI will be able to work on it. Next, let's start our Jupyter Notebook. Then let's import our libraries. First of all, of course, we are going to import OS library and then we are going to import Autogen and let's import some essential LangChain libraries. Well, I checked the LangChain uh, library and the necessary functions beforehand in the official uh, documentation of LangChain. So I installed all the necessary functions uh, from LangChain uh, in the beginning of our Jupyter Notebook. Now, as I see from the documentation of Autogen, generally it's a good idea to start with a OAI config list, uh, which we can, which we will define here as an external file. Then I will show you what to what to write in it. So we opened our config list, so it will be a list. Then we are gonna write a dictionary in it so we can actually write some very basic information in this list and of course this can be customized but for now we are just gonna need some two parameters first one is the model since openai released this model very recently i actually want to try this one here then we are gonna of course need the token of the openai apis Now we generated our config list and we defined the config list in the Jupyter Notebook as well. And we declared the models that we are going to use, which is GPT-4 Preview, which is the most recent uh, model. And also I might want to use GPT-3.5 Turbo with 16K context. And also in this step, we might need to export uh, OpenAI API key in the notebook as well. And now since I didn't export the OpenAI key, in the environment beforehand. I'm gonna export it in the Jupyter Notebook, but you should know that this is not the best practice and you should uh, try to avoid this usage. Now that we import all the necessary libraries here, now we can start to work with the length chain, especially for the PDF reading part. We are going to define our loaders uh, list. Then I'm going to use py PDF loader and I will just gonna read that PDF file I just exported in the same directory. Since I have only one file, this is unnecessary, but if you have multiple files, this can be a good practice. Now I will define an empty list of docs. Then for the all loaders I have, I'm gonna load those files in our docs list. Then we need to split our files because a file by on its own is very large and we cannot directly use it in GPT. 
So that's why we are going to have a text splitter object and we are going to split our file. For this one, I'm going to use character text splitter. And you should know that there are also other alternatives. And you should try and find the best way to split for your use case. I'm going to define the chunk size as 1000, which is a generally used parameter. And I'm going to say chunk overlap is zero. Then I'm going to actually split our files. Then we are going to create the embeddings object from OpenAI. And we will also define our retriever. For this one, I use the face. But again, you should know that there are lots of other alternatives here. And one good way is to handle that, creating a chroma uh, vector space and then using it as a retriever. And it seems like we are still missing some libraries. Now that we have the retriever, we can start building the next important step. Retrieval Q&A chain. For that one, we are going to use conversational retrieval chain that we imported from LangChain. And for the large language model to that chain, we are going to use chat OpenAI. I will set the temperature to zero, but if you need some creative answers, you can try to set it a higher number, up to one. Then I will declare the model that I want to use. Then the retriever object. Then I will declare the memory object here because, because I want that conversational retrieval chain to hold the history of our chat. Then we are going to test our QA right here. We will define our question in a dictionary with the key question and the value is the question itself. And now we can see the result of our first examination of Q&A chain. Our PDF file and the balance sheet was actually in Turkish language. And we see that even we ask our question in English, it successfully just found the relevant field and its value. Now we want Autogen to use that conversation retrieval chain and the relevant PDF file as a source. In order to manage that, we are going to need to define a function and then we will map this function to the autogen. So let's start building that function. As you can see, it's a straightforward function that takes the question as input and then runs the QA function that returns the answer. Now we can start building our autogen configuration. Our first parameter is request timeout. And I think it is self exploratory. Then we are going to define the seed. We are going to set the temperature to zero and now the most critical part function the name will be answer financial table question which is the same name i used before in the function then we are going to write a description for it then we are going to define the parameters and i'm just going to paste the parameters from the documentation now that we defined our configuration we can now start building our agents for this basic example i'm going to define two agents the first one is going to be the assistant then we are going to create the user proxy agent, which is the most important one here. I'm going to define the human input mode to never. I don't want to interfere with the process, but if you want to interfere, you can set, you can change this parameter. And then max consecutive auto reply, I'm going to set it to 10. If you increase that number, it might continue by itself too long. And then the code execution config, which will be responsible for the code execution. I'm going to say working directory will be the current path. And I want it to use Docker with, a, with an image that I already installed in my machine. But if you want, you can set it to false, but it can cause some complications with your computer. Then we are going to define our system message. And I am just going to use the one in the documentation. Now it seems like we are all set. And then we are going to finally give it to its first task. For this one, we are going to use the user proxy and we are going to initiate our chat. And we are going to pass the assistant to it. Then we are going to pass our 
message. I already prepared the message and I will just paste it here. So it will be half Turkish and half English, but it should be fine. Now we are going to run the code and we'll see how it will handle that problem. And as you can see, it just started to work on it and started to find some important values from the balance sheet. And we'll see if it's going to be able to create our CSV file. Well, it seems like it managed to write a CSV file. And when we check that, it contains all the necessary information that we ask from it. So it seems a success to me. And after writing the CSV file, it continues to find other values from the financial tables because I asked that after the CSV file and AI act accordingly. Well, that's it for this tutorial. If you have other topics in your mind that you want me to check, please write them in the comments. And please remember to subscribe if this video helped you.